Hey everybody, hey, it's Mr. Forster again. Hey, I'm gonna try to give you a little introduction to uh, chapter four, program files, data files, subdirectories. It'll, also, it'll include uh, not only information about directories, but it should also cover things like the prompt command, um, a little bit about move, um, and the path command uh, in this process. Okay, so let me go ahead and start by sharing my screen. Okay, and then I gotta come down here and type in CMD. Great, and then I have to reacquire my share, so give me a moment here, and then share screen with my, there we go, system prompt, and I'll come back out here and maximize. Okay, now we're, we're, we're where we're at, okay? So, um, you know, when we look at um, our, our files or whatever and stuff, let me go to drive I colon, my student activities disk, and do a, uh, a dir, say, slash um, um, p to pause, right? I start looking at a bunch of files, okay, and these are probably just data files. And the question, the reason I know that they're kind of data files, because their extensions have kind of funny things. They don't really kind of stand out to me. Uh, let's see if we can see any command files. I'll press enter. Uh, I don't see any exes yet, you know. Um, yeah, I don't see any .com files. Let me go to drive C into a directory. And okay, I got folders and stuff. Um, you know, let's say that, uh, you know, when I look at some of the stuff that's here in my drive C, uh, I, let me go to the root directory, cd backslash of drive C directory. And now it says, oh, look, okay. Program files, something called program files. Okay. So cd um, um, space backslash. And then because it's a longer name, I'm gonna put quotes program files, remember, Microsoft is not case sensitive, and then do a directory, okay? And then I see some pro, again, another subdirectory folder, okay, on top of that, okay? So typically, um, program files and stuff end with like an exe or a com extension or something like that, and then the data files are those ones that we use for ourselves, okay? So again, if I do uh, cd backslash users backslash mark and clear the screen, we're right back to where we started a little while ago, okay? Um, uh, let's see, let me go to drive I colon again. I'm in the student data file and I'm gonna do a directory slash W in the wide view. Oh my gosh, okay, now it's left to right. Does it matter to you whether or not you have this screen by wide view or if you had just DIR this view? It's kind of like, hey, here it is in like landscape, okay, that's the wide view or portrait mode like this space, okay? It doesn't really matter to me. I start looking here, they have DIRs, so I know those are directories or sub subdirectories or folders. Up here, the directories or folders and stuff have brackets around them. So I know that, say, here's data, level one, media, and then down here, here is data, level one, media, so on, okay? And so again, back to the DIR command from chapter one, you could do the various directories of files or folders. Hey, by the way, if we haven't uh, done this yet in an earlier video, if I wanted to say, what is specifically directory listing of this file called state.cap, I could type in dir space state.cap. Now I did give its location, so it has to be in the root directory of drive i here, because I didn't. If not, I'd have to pipe in dir space i colon backslash state state that cap. But since I know that I'm in the root directory and I could see it right up in here that it exists, okay, then I'm just going to go ahead and shortcut it and just give it for the file. And it says, oh, here's the specific information. This file state dot cap was last either created or last modified on the 31st of July, and that it was a timestamp and it's 260k in size, not a real big file. Okay, so that's the use of the dir command. Okay, so again, hey, if I'm in drive i and I look at this thing here right now, I maybe I want to create a new folder called CIT40. So I'm going to say md make directory space CIT40. Press enter. And now if I do a directory, what should I have? I should have a, here it is, a new directory called CIT40. Okay, let me try that again. md space backslash, and I'm gonna call this one, um, I don't know, CIT50. Press enter. Now if I do a directory listing, I'll see that I have two folders that I just created a, a few moments ago using the md make directory command. md slash question mark, 
says, what is the MD, the make directory? See, here's the syntax of it. And here's some examples. It's kind of like, hey, make a directory with some whatever um, options that I have. There's also what's called change directories. We talked about that a little bit in a chapter previous. And then there's also finally what's called a remove directory, RD. And we, these all kind of go in sequences. So if I said CD slash question mark, that's the syntax of the change directory command. And then the other one, RD slash question mark, there's the syntax of the, what was it? The remove directory command, removes, deletes the directories, okay? So again, with the question mark up here, I said, what is the MD command? Oh, it creates a directory. I asked for help. I said, what is the CD command? It displays the name or changes of the current directory. It allows you to change them, okay? What is the RD command? It removes or deletes a directory. Okay, a uh, big uh, little note there about remove directory. You can only remove a directory if there are no files or folders inside of it. So if you have stuff in it, okay, you have to use the remove directory with a switch, okay, and that's gonna be, you know, like with subdirectories or whatever, slash S, okay, and that will actually delete it. If not, you'll have to first go in and delete those files in or folders in that subdirectory, then you can step out of the subdirectory and say, hey, I don't want that directory anymore, okay? So it's kind of like saying you can't remove your, you can't tear down a building called CIT40 if you're inside the building. Got it? I have to step outside the building, then I can say, okay, you can tear down that building CIT40, okay? So again, if I uh, clear the screen and I said DIR, I have those two new subdirectories that I just created a little while ago. I can change to those subdirectories by cd backslash cit40. And then if I do a directory, I can say, hey, yeah, you have one. See here, right? There's the directory name there, but I don't have any files in it. Okay. You know, um, and I could, um, I could move a file into this. You know, I could try to do that. Do you remember there's, a, again, this is just a brief flirt on move. M-O-V-E space, um, I'm gonna give the full name. I'll say I colon backslash state dot, uh, dot cap to I colon backslash CIT 40 backslash state dot cap. So what I said is I wanna move a file, state dot cap, which is in the root directory of drive I, and I wanna put state dot cap again in the CIT40 directory off the root of drive I. Okay, and now it says one file has been moved. So if I look at CIT40, okay, I now have state cap. Now let's make sure, a move command means it doesn't exist in the original location anymore. I can still see it up here, state.cap from a previous write, um, DIR, but if I go back to the root directory, CD backslash of drive I, and then do a directory listing, state.cap is gone. I now have only state.2 or state2.cap, okay? So let me do the reverse of that, okay? Let me say move i colon backslash, right? CIT40 backslash state.cap to what? i colon backslash state.cap. Now there are some shortcuts that I could do along the way. Like if I wanna use the same file name in both places, I just have to identify it. Hey, where is it that I'm, what is it that I'm using for the first state.cap? And if I just said I call and backslash, if I don't give an, a, that same name, it'll just assume it's the same name. But as you're getting started off here and stuff, I really encourage you not to take shortcuts in the commands until you get really comfortable with it. So the way I would read this is, I wanna move, a file called state cap, which is in CIT 40 off the root directory of drive A, and I wanna put that file as state caps in the root directory of drive I colon, okay? Oh, I said A, but anyway. Great, now if I do a directory, I see state got cap is back in, here it is, no problem. And I still see I have my CIT 40, so if I do a directory of CIT 40, and it says, oh, there's no state dot cap in here anymore. Okay, I did space, but dir backslash CIT40. Again, 
those, I moved it back to where it is. This is where we get into the point where pretty soon, next chapter, you're gonna start playing more and more with the um, student activities disk, where it's gonna say, great, I want you to delete that, uh, that musics folder. I want you to make a new folder. I want you to move all these files around. In which case, you're gonna mess up your, your, your drive I colon, right? You're gonna mess up your student activities disk. And then it's gonna say, you know what? Like the Etch-a-Sketch, I want you to kind of delete all those files and folders and recopy from the WugXP. To you guys, WugXP is that zip drive or that zip file that I put on, um, on Canvas for you that opens up the default of all those student data files, okay? And then you simply do that again like I did in that first video in, um, in uh, the week, um, I think it was a week chapter one. Anyway, the one that says, hey, how do you get the zip files onto a USB stick? And this way, you basically are resetting your USB stick back to its original state, okay? So if I were to go through and delete everything that's on my USB stick right now, then I would want to go back and unzip that um, file, the student data disk file that I had given you before, and then copy those files back onto the USB. Now I have a fresh starting point again and we can continue on. So your book is gonna start doing that, especially for the problem sets or through the chapters, and you should sit there and say, oh yeah, if I have to do that, it's not a big deal. They just called it WugXP, the XP data stuff, whatever, the working um, stuff. So anyway, um, all right, so that was the little kind of tidbit into the change directory, make directory, remove directory and a little intro to the move command. Um, again, a move implies you take something from one location to another location. In chapter five, we're gonna spend quite a bit of time on the copy command. Your author is gonna sit there and say, hey, I wanna copy, I wanna leave the original here, and I wanna put a duplicate over there. So when I'm all done with the copy command, I have two. Okay, now what's the difference between copy and move? Copy has two, the original and the duplicate. Move says take your original, and put it someplace else, okay? So that was the little flirtation into the move command. Um, the next two commands and stuff are what's called the prompt command and the, um, and the path command. So if I say, let me clear the screen. And I say prompt slash question mark. Okay, the prompt command allows you to change the CMDXE prompt, okay, on the screen. So for instance, the default right now for the prompt command are the two things, dollar sign P, which says show me the current drive and path, and dollar sign G, put a greater than sign next to it, okay? So I'm gonna use this in a kind of a different format here. I'm gonna say, what if I don't like that greater than, that right arrow sign, and I want this parentheses, dollar sign F. Then I would say prompt, dollar sign P for the path, just like I had before, and dollar sign F, and now, look, there's the parentheses, okay? Or maybe I want that pipe symbol, dollar sign B. So I'm gonna go say, I'm just gonna make it easier. I'm gonna go up arrow, and I'm gonna put dollar sign B, that's the pipe one, and now I have that pipe symbol. Or if I wanna reset it back to the dollar sign G, I'm gonna go say in prompt, dollar sign P, dollar sign G, and my system prompt has that arrow back again. Okay, so I'm using the prompt command with various, these are switches, and I'm not quite sure why Microsoft felt the need to introduce a, a, new, a new option, okay, um, which would be the dollar sign, as opposed to using forward slashes or whatever for other switches, but eh, that's whatever they did, okay. So you don't have to have the dollar sign P, the path, okay, um, you don't have to have uh, the arrow, you know, okay, you know, it just really depends upon what you want the system prompt to look like. You only get so many options and then that's it. So that's the prompt command, right? That tells you, hey, when I'm in, say, drive, uh, drive C, the prompt command says, see this part? That's the path, right? That's the dollar sign P portion. See that little arrow? That's the dollar sign G, because that's the symbol that I just simply want as a separator between the path and what I start to type. Okay, and again, it doesn't matter what I use, I can choose whatever I want in this process, okay? If I just wanted the current drive, right? I could say prompt, um, current drive is um, dollar sign N, space dollar sign N, and now I have just the current drive C, 
you know, it kind of looks freaky without the colon there. So that's always kind of bothers people, you know, when you do stuff. Okay. So I'm going to go up arrow a couple of times, go back there. You go prompt dollar sign P dollar sign G. Oh, I feel much better. I put it right back to where they had. Okay. So that's the prompt command. And the last one was to look at what's called the um, path command. So let me clear the screen and look at path slash question mark. Okay. And the command key is used to display or sets a search path for executable files. Okay. If I start off by just typing in path by itself, this is the various paths on my computer. It says path equals C colon backslash windows backslash system 32 semicolon. So that's like a box or that's like a room and I went through the door into the system 32 room. Okay. But then there's a C colon backslash window. That's like another room that is adjoining, like a hotel rooms, two hotel rooms that have a common door in between. Okay. That's the system 32 and the windows folder. Oh, that there's a W B B E M under system 32. See the semicolon again. That's a third room with another door and a fourth room with another door. Every semicolon separators is an open door. What's the big difference is, is that a path, which allows you to have things that live in its own room, like a, a hotel room or a classroom, but if you create a path relationship between the rooms, it, even though you may have things separated in BE-129 and BE-127 and BE-126 or 27, you know, 23, okay, as long as they have a common door between them, your organization says, I have them separated into the different folders, the different path locations, but what I want to execute a command or I want to find that file, it will look through all the open doors that I have created. Okay, so that path command is pretty helpful. When you install a software program, like let's say you were doing taxes and you got something like TurboTax. Okay, now TurboTax will want to have its own folder name called TurboTax or T-Tax or something like that. Now, it's not going to want to disturb your existing path. It's going to want to append onto that path that you're working with because if it replaces uh, your existing path, it would close all those other doors that you needed to run all your other programs. So it's going to say something like a path equals percent path percent or something like that or the previous path semicolon and then TurboTax path. Okay. So again, as you go through it, it kind of gives you a little bit more of an idea of what's there. But the path command is to do what? It shows you the do different um, folders um, and the, or subdirectories, however you want to call it, okay, that have a common doorway system inside there, okay? So if you were at it, back in our BE building and you were to walk through the building, imagine you opened up every door to every classroom and you walk through the first floor. Every classroom has its own contents, but with the door being open, you can easily from the hallway access anything that's in any room as long as there's an open door with it. And that means there has to be a path separated by the next path, separated by the next path, and so on. Okay. So the basics of the path command and stuff really do help our systems, especially when we install and say, guess what? We're going to remodel and we're going to add another room or we're going to divide one room into two rooms and we'll make a common door in between them. Okay. And so there's our path command. Anyway, I hope that kind of helps a bit. Let me go ahead and stop sharing and end the recording. So you guys have a great one.